That journal has forged an enviable reputation for investigative journalism and independent research. Unshackled by the agendas of donor organisations. gone from strength to strength. It's something that uh, definitely has a place uh, for the next 20 years. Pacific Journalism Review began in 1994 in November that year at the University of Papua New Guinea and was started to be a publication to publish research around uh, Pacific uh, examples and uh, Pacific situations and very little had been done at that stage and so the journal was um, started to provide an outlet for that sort of research. Kempion Hasa was our first uh, main cartoonist and he arrived at the University of Papua New Guinea at the age of 22. He just had this natural genius. Uh, he, he was just a wonderful cartoonist. And um, in our third edition of the journal, it's been the only one that's actually been in a book form devoted to a collection of his cartoons. Here's, here's one here, for example, and this was an issue at the time about um, ID cards. Uh, the Papua New Guinea government wanted to bring in these ID cards and it was seen as a huge infringement on uh, uh, freedom of movement and freedom of people generally. In Papua New Guinea at the time, press freedom was a fairly major issue. Uh, politicians um, in Papua New Guinea and all, also throughout the Pacific have always threatened the media and never really understood the role of the media in a democracy. And so politicians took every opportunity they could to shut down or silence or gag uh, the media. Uh, and Pacific Journalism Review took uh, a leading role in debate about uh, media freedom issues and providing some of the research to underpin uh, the campaigns uh, about keeping a media free in Papua New Guinea. Pacific Journalism Review moved from Papua New Guinea in 1998 to Fiji. Uh, and the reason for that was because I'd been the founding editor of uh, PGR and I was appointed as the head of journalism at the University of the South Pacific. But in some respects, um, the University of the South Pacific had uh, better resources in terms of supporting the journal than it had uh, when I was at UPNG. Fiji television had been trashed. In 2000, there was a coup that wasn't quite a coup. Um, a, a maverick businessman, George Spate. He gathered around him a number of renegade soldiers and they seized the elected government at gunpoint and held them for 56 days. Pacific Journalism Review uh, did a special edition around this um, the following year. Uh, reflective articles, investigations and research all around this uh, attempted coup. PGR moved uh, from Fiji uh, to New Zealand. Uh, and became based at um, AUT University. The first edition here was in 2003, and uh, then later on, the Pacific Media Center was established by our School of Communication Studies in 2007, and so PGR then became part of um, Pacific Media Center. Only logical that a journal devoted to the Pacific media should come out of a centre which devotes so much energy to researching and writing about the Pacific media. Um, I've been involved with PJR pretty much since it began. Uh, the first time I had a piece in it was when I was working at the University of the South Pacific back in the early 90s. Uh, I had written a piece for Ireland's Business, I think, or Ireland's Review, which David picked up and ran as a separate article in PJR. So I've been contributing to it on and off since then. It has a quite distinctive Pacific orientation and that's what makes it absolutely unique from, say, any of the Australian uh, media or journalism academic publications and makes it unique certainly in New Zealand as well. So it's, it's a publication that survived for so long because it fills a very special and important role. I think the contents are quite steady in the sense that the focus is on Pacific and some Asia, but the cover has changed a lot. I'm talking about the design of the cover. And then in, when it came to AUT, there was a competition of the design of the cover. And so this present cover we have chosen. And since 2003 up to now, this is what we are using. And we thought that this 
the cover actually uh, depicts the Pacific symbols. That's why we chose this one. I've been involved with Pacific Journalism Review when it started here at AUT. I was involved with looking at the photographs and the graphics for a start. And then I carried on with doing the mail out. This includes actually mostly New Zealand and Australia, but we've got UK and Wales, we've got Canada and we've got US, which also includes the United States Congress Library. And that surprised me because not many journals probably uh, has that kind of privilege. Political cartoons have been quite characteristic of Pacific journalism views. Very different, uh, makes it very unique in terms of uh, comparison with many other journals around the world. Probably our leading cartoonist has been Malcolm Evans, uh, who won the New Zealand Cartoonist of the Year several, uh, several years. He drew several cartoons that particularly dealt with um, current coup leader in Fiji, uh, Vorek uh, Bainimarama. One cartoon featured uh, Bainimarama jumping up and down uh, on bloggers uh, like a bed of hot coals. Uh, another one showed uh, Bainimarama uh, sitting on a palm tree uh, with a parrot which is supposed to be a free press and a gag on its beak. All of them uh, very amusing but they set the sort of tone uh, for the journal. Uh, I guess what, uh, my first memory of being involved with Pacific Journalism Review was when I went up to Port Moresby and I was giving a course on investigative journalism. That was, I think, around the time of the second issue of Pacific Journalism Review and it was very much, you know, the beginnings of the journal and, you know, the growth of this link between scholarly work and practical journalism. And Pacific Journalism Review is probably the lead publication in advocating uh, the methodology of uh, investigative journalism as a research methodology. And we started the frontline section. Frontline is about uh, really putting into practice, if you like, the link between practice and theory. Very often it's just a cliche. People, everyone says they're in favour of it. It's one of those motherhood statements. But with this section, we are really saying what we want is pieces where people can demonstrate some practical journalism and then reflect on it uh, within a framework that they can spell out. And we've had um, Dr. Lee Duffield, uh, who has been doing for the past couple of years an investigation uh, research into the journal itself. I've been making a review of the Pacific Journalism Review, the PJR, over the length of its long life, 20 years, to try to look for trends and make an assessment because it is a big success. While the journal definitely respects custom and culture, and is, it certainly will shine a light on anything that will break up and harm communities, at the same time, it, it is clearly saying in every page that you look at that freedom and truth apply to everybody, everywhere. On 2010, the Global Cultural Industries Academy of Beijing, China, which represents the world, gave Pacific Journalism Review a prize for its motivated thinking periodical, and it was for its coverage of hot topics. Clearly, that was an indication of, uh, of how the Academy thought Pacific Journalism Review was quite innovative in its uh, coverage of contemporary issues. The fact is that without somebody who puts in those kind of hours and who has that passion and that dedication and that absolute burning commitment, Pacific Journalism Review would not have happened, Pacific Media Centre would not have happened and I think that AUT is extraordinarily lucky to have him. I take my hat off to the man, I really do. A journal really has a life um, built up by the contributors and the people who, who make the journal. So many people have contributed to this journal and to making it a success and that's what the journal is and what makes it unique is the contributions of all those people. Globally, journalism is in crisis. There's a focus on the um, business models of uh, most uh, media. And our business model is one that's based around the uniqueness and character 
of this journal. Uh, it's always been at a cutting edge, and so we hope to be at the cutting edge uh, in the future as well. And so uh, as the digital changes um, take place, uh, we hope that the journal will be at the forefront of those sorts of changes. Like a